Hi, I'm Algie, a Creative Arts Ambassador with ACA, Atlantic Center for the Arts, and this is Creative Caregiving, a series where we focus on using the arts to bridge the gap between caregiver and care partner using communication and creativity. Now, today's activity is in my second favorite place to be. You know, normally I'm a writer and I create creative works and I love to express myself. Uh, but this is probably my second favorite place to be, is in the kitchen. If I stood up straight, you would see my belly to confirm this story. Um, uh, but the culinary arts are probably uh, my passion. I grew up watching... Before I start talking to you, why don't I introduce you to the people? How about yeah. that? Since I'm in your kitchen. Okay, so with me today, I have three generations of phenomenal women. Uh, to my immediate right is Kimberly. Hi. And then we've got Kimberly's mother. Now, Kimberly's mother is a registered nurse. She actually has her master's degree in nursing. Um, she's working on her doctorates in nursing. Uh, and most people call her Nurse Letcher. I call her Mama Bev. Yes. Is that okay? Can they call you Mama Bev too? Yes, they can. Okay, I fantastic. Uh, and <laughs> to the far right is the one, the only. Chloe Bear. Hi. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I really wanted to start here in the kitchen for a few reasons. One, I feel like the kitchen is a place where everybody comes together. Regardless of your culture, everybody gathers around the table. Uh, either, whether it be for a big family meal or even if that's just the place where you drop all your junk on the way out the door. <laughs> the, the kitchen counter always ends up being a place where people meet and have conversations. And I've got memories growing up where uh, we would sit around the counter, and I know this is not unique to me, but we'd sit around the counter and shell peas or clean greens or, mm -hmm. um, I mean, shuck corn, right? And it's not just work to be done at the counter, but... <laughs> I'm from the South, I'm originally from Tallahassee, nice. and we would, uh, we, would, we would crack peanuts, and we'd sit there all day, I mean not peanuts, um, we crack pecans, we'd sit there all day crack, yeah. shelling pecans and eating them, we'd go through a big food lion bag of, uh, of pecans that we'd pick wow. from, <laughs> from the tree outside of my mother's job. Now we used to do that at my grandmother's. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. What, so pecans? Yeah. And where's your grandmother from? Oh man. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Well, I love it. So this is your mom? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, and this is why I'm glad that we've got all these generations here because mm -hmm. you're a nurse, correct? Yes. Okay, fantastic. And thank you so much for all that you've done. Oh, How long have you been in the nursing field? 51 years. Wow. Wow. To Amazing. The glory. I love it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. No, thank you. And so with that, I know you've taken care of a lot of people. Yes. But to my understanding, you had to take care of your mother for a while, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did. And I know you weren't alone in that. No. Kimberly mentioned that there were times when you were in high school, right? And yeah. you went to take care of her as well. Yeah. My senior year, I would leave uh, a suburb, drive into the city, bring her some breakfast, kind of help her get, uh, maybe use the restroom and, and get comfortable and then run back to, to start, go to class, I guess. Yes. Wow. Yes. Which is, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of responsibility for someone who's in high school. Even if the task itself may not have been humongous in the grand scheme, the emotional toll that comes with uh, being a caregiver, uh, the balancing the responsibility of getting to and from class, knowing mm -hmm. that that is your main task, mm -hmm. and most of us when we are that young, don't think about being a caregiver and then years later after uh, how many children do you have in total? I have three. You have three. I love it. <laughs> and so after two children you have Chloe mm -hmm. and I know you love Chloe dearly because you talk about her all the time yeah. uh, but I would ask you before Chloe was born did you know that she was going to have some challenges with mobility? We knew nothing. We literally knew nothing. Um, exactly. She was born and um, they whisked her away and um, it was minutes before we knew what was going on and she spent two months in the NICU. Wow. Yeah. And so, and Mom Bev, you can chime in on this. Okay. I know you've seen a lot of people come into the world. Could you 
in in any way, could you have prepared yourself for the idea that you were going to be a caregiver from birth? Now, now I'm, I know that you're the one who was her mother. You took care of her. Right. But I'm saying, as a nurse, in your mind, do you think that there could have been anything that Kimberly could have done to prepare herself mentally to become a caregiver from jump? Actually, when you are a mother, you're kind of used to being a caregiver. Yeah. Now, that's an everyday thing in terms of feeding, clothing, you know, wiping up, you know, whatever. Yeah. But because we were not told, Kimberly had, and I was on the phone with Kimberly during most of her uh, delivery because I was still in Chicago, and they had had ultrasounds. There should have been some knowledge that the ultrasound was not in the normal range. We were told nothing. This was a huge shock to us. Got it. And uh, I, I wanted to be Superman and just Superwoman and fly there as soon as I could because I could hear what was happening. And I, I would say to Kimberly, Kimberly, you've got to get your doctor to explain what's happening because a 24-hour labor should not have happened. I get it, yeah. You know, because even if they knew and didn't tell us, she could have had a C-section. Mm -hmm. And that would have been less trauma on our little Chloe. But God is merciful and she came out okay. I love that. I love that. And so, she came out okay. You're taking care of her. Can you tell me how did your experience as a caregiver and a mother prior to Chloe prepare you for being a full-time caregiver? Wow. Um, honestly, I don't think anything fully prepares you to be a full-time caregiver. Um, when Chloe was born, I and they told us we could finally take her home after two months, I was more than nervous. I was petrified. I was terrified. Wow because she went home with a, uh, a breathing monitor as well as a heart monitor. And in time it beeped, I was waking up like I, you know, it was, it, it changed the way that I sleep, yeah. you know, um, everything, it, it, you know, because if one of those went off, it meant that there was something wrong with her. So I, you know, I was just terrified. And then she ate through a tube that went in her mouth and I was like terrified. Um, just so many different things and so um, but I would honestly say my experience with my grandmother did not prepare me okay for her until maybe now well wow. you know what I mean? why now because as a baby um, in in her steps of of change it had nothing to do with my grandma like my grandmother could walk a little bit I kind of like like hobbled her over to the, and, and the, the toilet seat was like right there, you know, the portable mm -hmm. toilet. So it was, that's really all I did. And if I'm being very honest, when I was 17 years old, I was just excited that I got to drive from there sure. to here. You know, I've been driving back and forth like, this is responsibility, you yeah. know, like, so it was my senior year and I just felt like I was doing big things, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. And I was, also helped her I was about to say, I was, yeah. I was happy that I, I could help my grandmother, you know, yeah. um, and she actually rebounded from that. We, we had her another 20 years darn That's amazing. after that, you know, but, um, almost like maybe 15, 20 mm -hmm. years, but, um, I was, that experience um, is not what shaped me the most. What really shaped me is this woman right here. Her many years of being a nurse and teaching me how to care for people and how to um, put someone else's needs in front. Like that is kind of what fixed my mindset to be like, I'm scared to do this, but I'm gonna do whatever I can for her. I love that. And I wanna, I wanna talk some more about that. <sighs> I also wanted to highlight a word that you mentioned, which is you were just happy to help. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's so important when it comes to involving your family in caregiving. Um, and so we're going to come back to that theme of help because it's part of the reason why we brought Chloe here today uh, mm -hmm. is to help us make cookies. But we'll come back to that. Okay, so Mama Beth, I want to talk to you a little bit about caregiving. Now, I know you've taken care of people, and I should tell you both, 
Uh, again, let me say thank you so much for inviting me into your home mm -hmm. and sharing your knowledge, your experience with others because most of the people who are watching this, uh, they may be caregivers for the very first time. Um, and you know, maybe they have little ones that they're being caregivers for because they have children who are, uh, the term I love to use is atypical, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just a little bit different uh, process that they go through on a daily basis. Right. Or they may have older people that they're, we call them care partners. Their care mm -hmm. partner may be older. Mm -hmm. um, and so they've got a wealth of life experience and they just can't do all of the things that they used mm -hmm. to do. Um, but now they want to. And so we really want to incorporate everybody into what we're doing. That's the idea of using these arts to bridge the gap and to improve communication, to create opportunities for you to do things together. Mm -hmm. uh, and so tell me a little bit about your experience of taking care of older people. Is there mm -hmm. anything that you can say to someone who is a first time caregiver or who is transitioning into caregiving? Maybe, maybe they just found out that they have to be the full time caregiver for, for a loved one. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give me, I'd say your top three tips on how to best take care of someone and take care of yourself at the same time. Wow, those are really great ideas because it is something that you really have to grasp and understand, especially with a senior. And being a senior, I can say this. <laughs> there are you, th you, you've earned it. I've earned yes. it, yes, yes. There are things that you have to have patience with. Okay. A lot of patience. Okay. Because seniors are going to forget that you told them certain things. They're going to forget. Oh, I remember my mother. She used to forget that she had eaten already, or that she hadn't eaten all day. She says, "Oh yes, I've eaten." And I said, "Mommy, what did you have?" Oh, well, uh, <laughs> you know, she, yeah. she just went, and then she said, "Why are you asking me?" You know, that kind of thing. Right. But we have to have our patience. Absolutely. Because, and I say this lovingly, yeah. but just as a little toddler doesn't understand everything and you give them some basic guidelines and they're like, oh my. Well, seniors also feel like, hey, we're older than you. Right. Why are you right. telling me to right. do something? You're learning a new way of doing You're things. learning a new yeah. way and to keep it as happy as you can for their sake because they're not always aware of their deficiencies sure. and what's happening to them. Yeah. So um, that's, that's a major thing. So one, patience. And number two, remember the love. Mm. This is someone that you care about. Yeah. You know, someone who used to buy you things, make you good cookies or whatever, yeah. you know, and remember that now they need your help. So remember the love. And third. Hold on, before you go on to number three, give me yes. number two again and just get a little, vocalize a little bit louder. Please. Okay. Number two is to remember the love. Okay. Remember who you're caring for your mother, your auntie, your grandma, whomever. Those are people that spoke into your life and had an influence. I love that. Mm -hmm. So we have to remember that when, even when they're in a deficit, yeah. they're forgetting what you just told them five minutes ago, yeah. or they're saying, well, I don't need this help, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Just, oh, well, sweetheart, I need you, or somehow. That's good. You know, however you can bring it back around to a happy time for them. That's good. Instead of focusing on a deficiency. I like that a lot. Okay. And number three, wow, I'm a senior and I'm almost forgetting, but <laughs> number three would be to do your best. Oh, that's so good. And even if you come to a point where you don't know what to do, ask someone. There's always around. <laughs> someone who can There's give you some else. ideas. Yeah. Don't feel that you don't have to or that you're deficient because you're asking. Yeah. You know, I think that's so important. Thank you so much for that. Uh, my favorite tip, well, I have a top two. Remember the love. Uh, I, there are so many memories that I've shared with, um, with my grandmother and 
Uh, as my mother was taking care of her mm -hmm. as she was beginning her transition, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm thankful that her mind was there the entire time, uh, but there were things that she couldn't do anymore, and and I wanted to feel sad for her. Right. Uh, but then I remembered, I'm like, whenever she goes, because we know that at some point we're all gonna go, as much as we don't like to talk about it. Whenever she goes, these aren't the moments that I want to remember. These aren't going to be the memories that we play in my head. Yeah. It's going to be the time where I interrupted her in the middle of a banquet uh, right. to tell her a joke. Right? <laughs> it's, uh, you know, these are the times I'm going to remember. Yeah. And so I think that's so important. And then three, ask for help. Um, because we, we, we beat up ourselves. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, number three, the point was actually do your best. Yeah. Um, but we beat ourselves up because we we want to be strong for everyone and I think that as we do that, right, we scoop a little bit out yes. and we pour it out for everybody else and then it leaves us a little bit empty. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than doing our best, we take too much mm -hmm. from ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and there's usually somebody we can lean on. Yes. Even if it's not a person that you know, there's usually a phone line you can call, yes. there's a million blogs, there's helpful videos yes. up on YouTube right now if you go to ACA, Atlantic Center for the Arts Creative Caregiving Series that talks about things just like this to link you with people who have been through this experience who can keep you on the right path. I absolutely love that. And now back to what you said earlier, Kimberly, about helping. Um, I think that sometimes the connection comes with just being together, right? Um, like I said, there's memories that were made right around the kitchen for me and my family. And I think that having Chloe here and helping us make cookies, no, I'm going to be honest. I'm excited to talk to you guys today. I'm probably more excited to eat cookies. Oh, no, right? <laughs> um, oh, for definitely sure. going to be the bonus. Yes. For sure. Uh, and, and you mentioned Chloe eats through a tube. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that, and you and I were talking about this a little bit, I think that more than anything, the fact that she gets to help, um, the fact that she's involved with something that she doesn't do every day, mm -hmm. probably means a lot more to her than yes. a cookie might. Absolutely. Exactly. It's, it's really not, it's the process. It's not the end result at this point. Um, but she can, Chloe's, Chloe has favorite foods. Yes. You know what I mean? So um, she's, I think one last thing I would want to add to everything that she said is that remember that they're still people. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, like even if they do things differently than what they, they, are, they were used to or what right. you are used to, right. they're still people and there's still elements that they have of what people would consider normalcy, mm -hmm. but nothing's normal really in this world. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you find their normal, and that's how you guys, that's how you bridge that gap. You know what I'm saying? I love that. Me too. Amen. I love that. I love that. <laughs> okay, so enough talking. Let's do what we can do. Let's make some cookies. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am sharing with you and with you, congratulations. Uh, because I normally don't share this cookie this is recipe. True. This is this awesome. is true. I don't, I don't share my share recipes, recipes, but I'm gonna share it because I love these cookies so much, and they're so easy to make. Um, and so I want to tell you a little bit about what's in them, and we're gonna go through it. Uh, and then after that, as we mix this up, I need to I need some more facts. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what's in it. We're gonna do today a chocolate chip and walnut cookie. Uh, now, I love this recipe because you can switch it out. You don't have to do chocolate chips. You don't have to do walnuts. It's a total of two and a half cups. Two and a half cups of total mix-ins. And so if you want to do pretzels, you can do that. You can crunch up some candy bars. You can do Heath bars. You can do chocolate chunks instead of chips. Uh, just don't do anything wet like fruit. You can do raisins if you like. Just not like not fresh fruit or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, any nut, anything crunchy, candy is a great mix in. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about what's in it. So this recipe starts off like all good cookie recipes should with one cup or two sticks of softened butter. Now I like to use salted butter because it makes the cookie a little richer. You don't have to do that. Uh, and I choose the fatty European butter. Again, you don't have to do that. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. They're all alternatives. 
Uh, if you don't want to use butter, use margarine. You may use uh, vegetable shortening like Crisco if you want to do something else. Uh, if you're, maybe if you're doing vegan, we can talk a little bit about that. But uh, two sticks of butter, one whole egg. We got a three quarter cup of white sugar and three fourths cup of light brown sugar, lightly packed. Uh, in this recipe, it's also not one, two teaspoons of vanilla extract because I like it to be flavorful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we've also got one cup of nuts, one and a half cup of chocolate chips. Again, you can mix that ratio up however you like. If you like more chips and no nuts, switch it around. Do whatever you want to do. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We've got a teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of salt. Now, if you've used salted butter, you don't have to use a half a teaspoon of salt. You can do a pinch, you can do no salt at all. Uh, but again, I like these cookies nice and rich. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna mix up our wet ingredients, that's our sugar, our eggs, and our butter. Um, and we wanted Chloe to get her hand started. This is probably the best place to start. Um, so I'm going to let Kimberly set up Chloe um, at the stirring station. Yes, the stirring uh, station. And, and then y'all can get started there. Ready? Ready? You guys like to see our handshake? Yes. Yes. Let's go. So let me ask you, your favorite cookie of all time? Oh man! Well, you know what? What? Um, it was white chocolate macadamia. Nuts. No, that's a hold on. Let's pause for just a second because that's a cookie worth being up top. You said it was, so I need. It to was. Okay. And then Subway came out with this raspberry white like oh, that, cheese yes, cake. Yes, yes. And it's yes, like white cookie. macadamia nuts mm -hmm. with wow. the cheesecake. It, it was just like, it just took it to another level for mm -hmm. me. So that is now my favorite. But it's, it's, it's macadamia for me all day. I love that. All right. Okay, here, let me, let me jump in there. Uh, I'll stop being selfish. Mom Bev, will you grab that, uh, that flour over the there? Oh, yes. And, uh, and we're gonna add that next. So after we get our wet ingredients all in here, you did a phenomenal job. I know Chloe did most of the work, but she you, really did. You've yes. done a fantastic job. She set it up. Yeah, she did. Yes. We're gonna fold in our. Go ahead and just sprinkle it in there. All of it. Yes. Now I said sprinkle. It depends on where you're from. You right. can say whatever you like. But <laughs> because I'm from Florida, I say sprinkle. Oh, sprinkle. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and add the rest of it dry. Great. Now. This is way better than anything that you're gonna find in the grocery store, wrapped up in some plastic. You know, they put those little, those little metal knobs on the end of it, and you have to chew it off or oh. saw through it, and you, okay, look, this is way better than any of that. Oh, this good. stuff right here Natural. is the bee's knees. Yes. But it's a stiff dough. You're gonna to have to work it just a little bit. We're gonna add in our chocolate and our nuts, and this is where you really have to get a little elbow grease. So. You want me to do it, or you want to do I'll it? I'll get it started, and then okay. I will definitely hand it off to you. That's fair. Okay. 
Go for it. Go for it. Uh, you know what? Do you, do you want to start it off? I do. I, I had a feeling Please. that the senior wanted to. Please. So yes. we're going to allow her first dibs. All right. Go right on the head. Just now, dump it in there. No, okay, you, yeah, just dump that in. Yes, ma'am. Because it probably would be helpful to have a fork. All of it. Go for it. Please. Boom. I'm going to take those bowls. I'll get them out of your way. I gotta say, my you're doing a really good job with that. Oh, um, if you'll finish that up, Kimberly, mm -hmm. okay. I'm gonna get our cookie our cookie sheet right now. I highly recommend a cookie sheet uh, because there's no walls, so the heat doesn't get trapped inside on the sides at all. Unless she's mm -hmm. just like crisp sided cookies, mm -hmm. that's your business. Uh, <laughs> hey. But I like I love a good cookie sheet with a little bit of parchment paper. It doesn't take much to it. Here's how I measure out my cookies. I like to take a spoon yes. I like, or two and I make a couple of scoops, yes. but then I get tired of doing that because it's too much work and then I just start picking it up with my hands and rolling it. So oh, I'm going to wash my hands again. <laughs> yes. We're going to get elbow deep into this dough. We're going to start rolling by hand and so we can have the perfect size. Everybody okay with that? That's yes. fine. Yes, perfect. So here's our dough. I want the people to see how amazing. Look at this dough. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It doesn't get any better than that. Just Okay, so I'm going to give you a task, mm -hmm. and then you're going to pass it along to Mom Bev so she can pass them on to Chloe Bear. Simple scoop, right? Take two spoons. Mm -hmm. We're just going to use it. A spoon is going to, one spoonful is going to be a really big cookie. I want you mm -hmm. to know that. We're going to cut that in half. Get that out of there. Right? <laughs> and we're just using, we're using our spoon to shape it just a little bit, mm -hmm. not too much. Now, if you want to, you could just plop that down. Mm -hmm. um, but I like my cookies to be a little more uniform in shape. Me too. Uh, so, with that being said, this is about, let's call it half a spoon size mm -hmm. worth of cookie. That's what it looks like on my spoon. Mm -hmm. If you'll pass that along to Chloe and let her roll it. Very good. I'm going to have you pass it. Chloe, here we go. And then, Mom Bev, if you would just take her hand. Mm -hmm. and uh, I know this is her first time making cookies. Right. So if you take her hand, help her shape those, and I'm gonna let you keep scooping out cookies okay. uh, so, and filling up, uh, filling up our tray here. Ooh, take your time, Mama Bev. That's a big old cookie. That's perfect. That one's mine. Put it down there. <laughs> <laughs> and close, close is ready. Oh yeah, let's add that. Yeah. Now again, if you're like me and you're impatient, you can just you can just grab a spoonful. Will you dollop a spoon for me? Mm-hmm. Good That's job. Perfect. Boom. Yeah. And you just want to take it lightly, make a little cup, a little bowl in your hand. Mm -hmm. You just want to roll it together like so. Mm -hmm. There's a, we go. There it is. It looks like that one is done. Yep. Yeah, and you're placing you're placing them an uh, inch and a half to two inches apart. Give yourself plenty of room for these cookies to spread out flat. Excellent. You want to try doing one by hand? Good. It's a lot more fun. Is it? Yes. Okay. So while this is happening, our oven is already preheated oh. to 375. We're going to put these in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, if you like a softer cookie like I do, I like my cookie with a little bit of chew, um, then Great. set your oven to 350. All right, as you can see, our cookies are out of the oven. Now, I like my cookies with just um, a little bit of brown around the edge. So I pushed it past the 12 minutes. Uh, you can do them as short as eight minutes. Listen, that's not important. I'll make sure that the details are in the description. Uh, but we got to dig into these cookies. But before we jump into that, I know I asked you about your favorite cookie. Mom, Bev, what's your favorite cookie? My favorite cookie is a <laughs> snickerdoodle. Oh. <laughs> So I have to tell you, uh, as I eat a cookie, I don't care. I can't wait anymore. Um, I'm sorry, Mama Bell. Okay. Cheers. That's all right. Cheers. 
I have to tell you. I can you, sniff them. Yes. Okay. The snickerdoodle was the first cookie that I ever made by myself. Wow. Yes. And I remember uh, my father walked in and my father is a cookie lover, okay? Oh. Uh, anybody who knows him is laughing because they're like, yeah. Uh, and so he walked in after a long day of work and he sees me in the kitchen. <laughs> I was in the seventh grade, okay. Oh wow! And, uh, yeah. and I'm in there, and I'm in there making snickerdoodles. He's like, "What you making?" And I said, "I'm making them cookies. Look like you're just playing in cinnamon and sugar." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, don't worry about it, Dad. I tell you what, when they're done, I'll make sure I got one for you to try." He had the oh. entire pan. Oh my God! The entire pan. Awesome. So, uh, so at that moment, I knew. That I love baking. Yeah. I also knew that uh, baking snickerdoodles is a lot of work. So. I never heard. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try it. Mm. Is that why they don't make them sugar free? <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that this one is filled with all the love that you give to Chloe because I can taste it. And um, I tell you, being in the kitchen with people that you love makes memories that last forever. What we were able to do tonight was not only magical and delicious. Yeah. I encourage you to try this with your family at home. Um, if you don't have a family, just invite random people over um, <laughs> to enjoy these cookies because it's worth it. From her home to yours, uh, we wish you all the best. And um, man, I can't, I can't wrap it up like that. What am I, what am I getting at? And have a good. I'm delusional and mm -hmm. tired. Have and a good are delicious. Mm. Mm. Continue. So mm. talk about the connections. Mm. Continue to make connections. Yeah, thank you. Mm. You so good at this, girl. Mm. We should write stuff together. I told yeah. you before. <laughs> uh, these cookies are magical. Really, mm. they are. I'm going to eat another one, but Incredible. before I do, I've got to remind you. Uh, take some time. Be patient. Uh, know that you're already doing your best. Don't beat yourself up. There's plenty of help out there. Uh, continue to lean into the love uh, that you want to remember or the love that you want to, to walk in on a daily basis. Lean into that with your caregiving. Uh, remember that empathy, it happens over time. So don't feel rushed to know everything about your care partner right away if this is your first time. And if this is not your first time and you're feeling just a little bit downtrodden, remember that chocolate helps with so many things. <laughs> so maybe this recipe has a little bit of self-love in it for you. you uh, I'm so thankful for the time we get to spend here. Uh, again, this is Creative Caregiving with ACA, Atlantic Center for the Arts, brought to you by the United Way. I'm Algie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you.